where, where do you start when you start talking about the national parks? It, it's a very broad uh, topic, and, and I like to think that it's more than the 58 parks that have designation of national parks because there's really 391 units within the system of the Park Service. And as you'll see when you go through the series, if you haven't already seen that, uh, I happen to be able to watch the first two episodes up in New Brunswick. Um, and I will tell you, it's worth every minute of your time to watch those episodes. And I've already gotten on <clears throat> the internet and I've already watched again some of the um, episodes. It's fantastic. I guess we can start with uh, Abraham Lincoln. And as you well know, uh, Abraham Lincoln gave land to the state of California, which eventually became Yosemite National Park. It was a state park. People used it for their own purpose rather than for uh, the good of the public at large. I might mention that on the table down there, there is a newspaper from L the London News. It's 1859. It is about Yosemite National Park, 1859, London, England. So they were cognizant of the fact that we had a crown jewel in the U.S. In fact, there was a movement in this country, and we've had two of those. It's called See America First. When Fran Manella, the recent uh, director of the National Park Service, under her administration, uh, there was a promotion again, See America First, and with national parks being in the forefront. Once the railroad came in from Livingston, Montana to uh, Zanzibar, and then, uh, then it ended up, of course, in Gardner, Montana, a few years later. Um, the Wiley Company, which was one of the many companies that took people around in stagecoaches, had a five-day tour. It took five days to see the major sites within uh, Yellowstone. You probably can't see too well, but that uh, inner circle shows where the stagecoach went. And they basically went one way. They didn't go all the way to the south entrance. They cut across it at uh, Madison. And by the way, the coldest temperature ever recorded in Yellowstone was at Madison Junction. It was minus 66 degrees Fahrenheit. That was the coldest. The warmest, 90 degrees at, uh, at Mammoth, and that's the, the headquarters. Well, when the railroad came, the railroad had hired a photographer from Minneapolis, St. Paul, by the name of Faye Haynes. And Faye had a uh, photo business in Minneapolis, St. Paul, but Northern Pacific hired them as their official photographer. So he went along the whole uh, route of uh, the railroad taking photographs, and he also had a car that would stop in small communities that you could go to the railroad and get your picture taken and they'd have it for you the next day. And Haynes did a lot of that. But when he went into Yellowstone, he became the official photographer for Yellowstone. There is a photograph, a hand-tinted photo down there on the table that uh, Haynes took of the Lower Falls. That is a hand-tinted uh, photo. The Haynes family continued as photographers and concessionaires within Yellowstone National Park and up into the late 60s when the Hamilton stores took over. Uh, Haynes only had one son, his name was Jack, and Jack took over the business. Uh, Jack got married, his wife's name was uh, Isabel, and uh, she died in uh, 1996 or thereabouts. Um, it was the same weekend that uh, Connie Worth had died. Connie Worth, of course, had been a director of the National Park Service. Uh, we were, our family was on vacation at that time. 
But when, uh, after Isabella died, they had a major auction for uh, some of her, in fact, most of the estate that wasn't given to either the foundation, the University of Montana or Montana State. And in the one of the showcases, there is uh, a couple pieces that came out of Haynes' private collection. And I really felt uh, blessed to be able to get that. We have friends in Bozeman, Montana, uh, by the name of Jack and Susan Davis, who had the largest private collection of infemer related to Yellowstone. They sold it to the foundation. They had been offered more than twice the amount of money that they sold it to the foundation for, but they didn't want it out of the hands of the National Park Service because that's who ended up getting it. They also had, a, a, had 15,000 postcards in their collection of Yellowstone National Park. And there is a, um, a bibliography, if you will, that's down on the table of all the known images of uh, postcards that have been produced. One of the things that happened in many of our national parks is that we fed them garbage. We actually had amphitheaters in Yosemite. We had an amphitheater set up in Yellowstone where we'd go out and literally in the evening from the, the various accommodations and take the garbage and feed the bears. Now we know it's a no-no today. Uh, we call that habituation. You habituate a bear today and it's a dead bear. Um, and I know that the students uh, who have gone to the Smokies know about that. Uh, you're not supposed to feed the bears because they do get used to having people around and they think you're going to feed them all the time. And it really becomes a, an issue. I know that in, in the Smoky Mountains there's only been one uh, death related to a bear. Well, there's lots of stories about fishing cone. Uh, you see the gentleman's fishing there uh, in Yellowstone Lake, of course, is cold. And you catch fish, and that is a thermal feature in the cone. So you catch a fish, put it over in the thermal feature, and cook it because of the uh, hot water there. There's steam in that case. You know, at, at high elevations, and in fact, at this particular location, water doesn't boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it boils at 198 degrees Fahrenheit. So it takes uh, less time to boil water at a higher altitude. Uh, the lake is a little over uh, 7,000 feet in elevation, but there's lots of stories about people catching fish there and cooking them in the, uh, in the cone. There is some of the places, uh, this may be part of our Ohio trip, my wife and I are visiting every national park site in the U.S., primarily in the lower 48. I don't think I'm going to get to Samoa, and I don't think I'm going to be able to hike in to the Brooks Range in northwest Alaska. Uh, we may get to uh, the islands one of these days. I haven't been to Hawaii yet, but hopefully someday. But you go to a site. This documents that you were at a given site. The site superintendent at Shiloh um, Military Park has visited every unit within the national park system. Now think about that, 391 locations that he's been to, 391 throughout the US and Alaska and the islands. That is tremendous. Um, and it may be the only person that we're aware of that has visited every unit within the park system. I would encourage you to buy a passport, um, to visit each of these uh, wonders that we have. And I might mention some of the nicest places aren't necessarily the most notorious is the word I was looking for. One place that we have found, and we've been there twice, is Death Valley. Uh, it's fabulous to go to in the fall. Uh, this time of year, well, probably toward the end of October, first part of November, uh, or into April. is a great uh, time to go there. 
Another park that's neat, uh, very few visitors. Uh, those of you that want a spring break trip, uh, go to Key West, get on a boat, go 70 miles off the coast of Key West uh, to Dry Tortugas National Park, and uh, pay 150 bucks, of course. Take your snorkeling equipment, and if you don't have it, the uh, company that takes the boat out will give it to you. Fabulous place to go. Not a lot of visitors go to Dry Tortugas. Uh, it's a super park. Everglades, you remember the lady said, it's nice to know that it's there, but you can go to the interior, you can canoe it, and I would encourage those of you that um, are gonna be in the parks and rec profession to do that and get to know your parks.